West Coast Bunch. Let's talk about it. I think it's one of the best offenses in Madden every single year, and I think it does something that a lot of bunches don't. It it has plays that other bunches don't, uh, which is why we're going to be rocking it in this video. Now, we're going to be starting out with just kind of some basic stuff, and we're going to kind of get into why uh, this bunch has stood the test of time. This has been pretty much the, the most competitive bunch over the course uh, since Madden 18. Now, there's been other bunches that have come in and out of being the meta, but if you're going to run only bunch, I think that the West Coast bunch is probably the best way to be running it. Uh, obviously, this year, Colts was really popular. Um, Eagles, really popular. And then I just remember what the other one, I think it was pretty much it. Um, bunch strong off set, of course. But in general, if you're going to be running just bunch, I think most people would tell you that you want to be in West Coast bunch. I like standalone formations. reason I like standalone formations, I just think that's just how Madden has been played for years. It's how I like to play it. So, you know, I think West Coast Bunch is a lot of fun, and there's a lot of things that we can do with it. It's also a really good scheme if you have the conductor ability. The reason why is because with the West Coast Bunch, because it has so many really good routes that you can't really hot route, like it has a really unique post, it has a really unique corner, wheel routes, it has a post from the solo receiver that you can't hot route, all kinds of stuff like that. You can quick hike this formation pretty good because you don't need a lot of hot routes to be effective, right? Pretty much every good setup from West Coast Bunch requires basically one to two hot routes, maybe a quick motion here, quick motion there. But in general, this offense is going to work for you, um, and it's going to be really simple to be ran, and I like how the offense plays as a whole. Now... Uh, also, we're talking about this as we head into another Madden, right? We head into college football. One of the things that I want to emphasize with you guys as we head into those these different seasons is that there are a lot of different ways to skin a cat in Madden. There's a lot of different ways to run a good offense. But in general, one of the timeless principles that I think is true, no matter what Madden that you play, no matter what college football play, is that you need offensively to have routes that attack the entirety of the field. They have to attack the entirety of the field. If you cannot do that well, you are going to struggle with your offense. Your offense is going to be limited, and for your offense to be limitless, it needs to have routes that attack the entirety of the field. Now, I'm going to be doing another video on this on the channel, so if you're not subbed up, make sure you subscribe. But what do I mean by attacking every single area of the field? Madden can pretty much be divided into... It depends on how you want to do the math on it. Technically, ten or, or technically fifteen spaces, but real more practically, ten spaces. Uh, ten spaces is pretty much how you could divide the entirety of the field in Madden. And I think that you know, what do I mean by the ten spaces? Well, basically, if you picture like a first down marker, so zero to ten yards, you have the the left side of that zero to ten yards. You have the left like vertical hook or left between the numbers and the hash, uh, which I would consider that the vertical hook area. You have the direct middle, uh, which which we know, you know, just essentially where the where the middle is. And then you have the right side vertical hook area. And then you have the right side flat. So there's five spaces horizontally. Uh, if you even just look at this cover two drop, it shows that. You see how you have the light blue zones on the outside, and then you have those three zones in the middle. And then you have kind of what's known as the intermediate zones, which is also really important to talk about. The intermediate zones in Madden are from 10 to, a, I would actually say from 10 to 30. Um, some people would say they're 10 to 20. 10 to 30 to me is, is intermediate, is what I would consider intermediate. This is the mid-range. This is the mid-range game. And in my opinion, this is where Madden is won and lost. If you have an offense that can really do a good job of attacking that mid-range game, it's really going to help you. You need That's where you need really good routes. You can attack the underneath with your hot routes. You can attack the deep with your hot routes. But you really need kind of those key non-hot routable special routes that are going to do a really good job of attacking what I consider to be the intermediate, which is from about 10 yards Basically, from it's also considered the second level in the real NFL from about 10 yards to about 20-ish yards, 30-ish yards, okay? And then there's the deep zones. Now, typically, most people, because most balls in Madden are going to be thrown in that short to intermediate range, most people don't even count the deep zones. 
I still do. I think there's five specific points on the deep zones. If you really wanted to get kind of particular, you could probably ultimately divide them into five, uh, three. But in general, that's kind of you know what I would say with that. So why does that matter in terms of having an offense that can attack the entirety of the field? Well, on any given play, you need to be attacking several of those spaces. So if you look here on this route combination, the solo wide receiver is attacking every single underneath space on the entire field. We also are attacking kind of that intermediate to deep space on that deep left side of the field. So we're going to read this. It's essentially a high low to the left side. User goes there. We're going to check down to our drag. The user is also doing some really weird things in terms of user pressing. And if people start to do this to you whenever you are in bunch, one of my favorite things to do, and I think one of the most slept on things to do that a lot of people for some reason in bunch don't do out of West Coast, why more people are not running this tight slots is beyond me because this is actually a really good little formation and I think a lot more people should be running it because it does stuff like that whenever you can then when what I think is ultimately I think super effective is having intentional audibles I like to be in one formation the whole game if they're going to start to do stuff like that this is what I would consider a constraint theory play a constraint theory play or a constraint theory formation or a mini scheme or any of that stuff what it's designed to do is when they start doing odd things, like they start to really cheat one side of the field, they start to really over blitz you or over adjust. This is where mixing in some of these constraint theory plays and formations, I find to be super helpful to just say, okay, you're getting really comfortable defending my bunch. Let me just audible real quick, run a very basic flood concept. And it completely broke his defense because of the way he was lining them up. So all that to say, this is also why I consider Dollar to be the best defense in the game. So you might say, okay, well, Cody, if that's what you look in, if that's what you look at for offense, what are you looking for in a good defense in Madden? A good defense in Madden, in my opinion, number one has to be able to blitz. You have to be able to blitz if you're going to be playing a good defense in Madden. But also, and I think more importantly, you have to be able to cover the entirety of the field. You have to be able to cover the entirety of the field, meaning that your formation needs to be equipped to be able to literally cover the entire field if possible, right? Six, this is the one limitation I would say 6-1 has. It's very difficult for 6-1 to cover certain areas of the field, whereas a good dollar defense can truly cover the entirety of the field and it's really not that difficult for dollar to do that all right so uh, to me those are some of the factors that i'm looking for uh, in terms of effective defense also low-key there are the other cool part about dollar that i think is helpful is there's many different ways to to run dollar you can run a man line dollar you can run a default line dollar you can run a i actually really like running spinner um, like spinner against gun bunch is really, 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 really good. Right. So we'll run, we'll run some spinner here and, you know, try to get some heavy pressure and he's actually going to end up just lasering me over the top of my head. There you go. But the other thing that I think is really interesting about dollar from a defensive perspective, this is why I've been in dollar for the majority of the year. And I, I teach from dollar. The reason I teach from dollar is because it's the best. It gives you the most amount of options. Dollar not only gives you the most amount of ways to constrain space and the fact that you can you, you have a well laid out formation, a symmetrical formation that could be man aligned, that could not be. You have two slot corners, which allows you to do a lot of things horizontally and vertically in coverage. But also you have a lot of different ways that you can blitz. You also can run this defense man aligned, base aligned, default aligned. You can do double safety walk downs. The point is there's a lot of different variations and options. Whereas with 6-1, you're pretty much running at base line with the corners backed off, right? So to me, and there is some advantages to 6-1 because the blitz is that good. But there are some, in my opinion, really big advantages to, uh, to the dollar defense. So back on offense here, kind of looking at this. And again, we're just talking about attacking space, creating space, and understanding 
how that all works together. So, like I said, you have the underneath and really you have the intermediate area of the field. So what we're trying to constantly do here is we're constantly trying to attack and high-low certain defenders. We're trying to essentially put defenders in conflict where they are going to struggle to defend the spaces that we are attacking. Remember I said there was 10 spaces. Well, if you think about it on any, any given play, the most amount of players that are going to be dropping back into coverage is probably going to be eight, right? It's going to be between basically six, seven, or eight. You do have to account for a user, but in general, that's it. So you're going to have about eight people dropping back in coverage. So what we want to do is essentially have routes that can, as I finger that, and I don't know how I caught that, that can high-low certain defenders, put defenders in conflict, and, and create basically good spacing. So another great example that I like, this verticals play, um, you know, I think this is a really, really fun little play here. Something like this here, just puts that little space, boom. And you see how we're literally just peppering, you know, different pockets, different spaces. One of my favorite route combos in the game is to utilize essentially this right here because this just attacks everything horizontal vertical everything and when you motion this wheel route out it really puts a lot of stress on that flat defender you see they don't play hard flats we can easily just take what the defense gives us and we throw that verticals wheel and you just, i mean you'll just see how this is laid out the cool part about bunch also that a lot of people sleep on bunch is not just a compressed formation it is a spread formation within a compressed formation what do i mean by that well, at any given time, we can, uh, we can do this right here where we motion out and create an entirely different formation. This is now U-trips, Y-off trips pads. This is a trips formation. And you see here, I don't know what he just did with his user. We almost throw a pick, unfortunately. And you're starting to see he's doing kind of some weird stuff where he's like user bumping the slot receiver that just means we have to, you know, maybe throw some constraint theory plays in there, change some things up a little bit. Another one of my favorite things to do when they start doing that is I will, I will instead of working this left side, if their user is going to work over there on that left side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a lot of resource into basically working this right side. So the way we're going to do this is essentially like so. And we're essentially flooding the right side. I'm looking for that C route. Nice catch. There you go. So if he's going to do that, man, I'm going to manually bump on that other side. Then we can just as easy say, okay, well, then we're going to high load the defender on the left, right? I'd really like stick here. And, and this is an, another really underrated thing that a lot of people should, more people should do. And I did not call the right play. So we're just going to call this. And I got lurked by john madden that's why you don't do that that's why you don't call a play that you haven't labbed i was trying to call stick i accidentally called deep attack but i think another thing that people don't realize about bunch is you can turn this into bunch strong you can turn it into trips you can turn it into all kinds of things um that are that can be potentially advantageous for you a little inside zone off rip finally able to make some tackles out here I'm going to turn my match on. I really do think spinner is a very underrated defense, or even this free safety zone blitz is pretty underrated. Like, not, not that free safety zone blitz is underrated, but the way that I'm running it, I'm not base aligning it. And the reason I'm not base aligning it is, is due to the fact that I don't really want to mix in. Like, it's just free safety zone blitz. It gives us a unique alignment that a lot of people aren't using. And then, like, let's say here, like, he goes to trips. We can do something like this. You know, and then, the, and then now all we got to do is worry about this right side, which actually used her poorly. But there's – I'm telling you guys, dollar is cool because there's so many different ways you can get to it. Whereas, like, dime, a formation like dime, for example, I think you're inherently limited in what you can actually accomplish and do. That's the big thing for me. It's so like here we'll go dime normal. And I mean, it's like, what do you call here? Get a little bubble screen. Dime normal is going to be a little better against the run, but
But it's and you do get the two slot corners, which I think is helpful. You don't get a better blitz in dime normal than you get in dollar, right? It's like what actually improves when I go to these other formations. Now six one, you can certainly get uh, a little bit better of a blitz, but you trade in some really really good coverages. All right, so he's going to throw that up. Let's not let him do that. I don't know how that just happened, but okay. My man Souls Prince out here just slinging it to Calvin and Cam lit glowing and just can't get it done. Okay, so we got a minute 30. We need to score. We're kind of need, it's kind of important that we score here because we are not getting the ball at halftime. So that's not good. <laughs> so I'm trying to think how we'll attack when we come out here. If you really think about the reason why people aren't running bunch anymore, like West Coast bunch, like you don't really see this offense being ran at a competitive. The only people that run this offense at the highest level is really Dubby and Skimbo. And they've not had a ton of success at the highest level, right? The reason I'm bringing this up is because, number one, there are, like, more nuanced ways to use this offense. Uh, I think that's part of it. But the second thing, and I think the most important thing, is it does certainly put you at a little bit of a disadvantage when, you know, your offense – is one formation anymore. As I have a wide open player, but I just get shedded. That's awesome. All right. So we really need to uh, kick our offense into gear here a little bit. I'm just getting randomly shedded too, which is a re which is another reason why a lot of people have gone away from this formation is not because of the random sheds. It's because of the fact that you can't block your tight end. And so it, it has limited, like, blitz pickups for sure. But, again, like, one of my favorite route combinations in the game is this right here. I think this is such a good route combo because it just spaces the field out so well. It really manipulates cover two, as you'll see right here. Tom Brady threw the ball into the third row, even though we have a wide-open player. But I think the post routes you get from West Coast are super relevant, like – like, if you go to Colts, you just don't get that. You don't get these post routes. You don't get, you don't get that solo wide receiver on a post. And so I think, and I think that's a big, a big reason for the success of this formation is when you have this backbreaker post on the solo side and on the other side, you have posts to both sides. It really helps uh, just in terms of how the formation works, as you see right there. And it just makes it super hard for the user to, to really key in on what you're, what you're actually doing. I do think it's a little limited in terms of other, other formations. I don't think it's limited in terms of what you can do from bunch. I think it's the best bunch in the game. But I do think it's a little limited in terms of what you can do from the others. Let's see here. That's a weird defense. He's kind of doing some weird stuff on defense. And I'm not terribly concerned about getting seven, even though I'm not meaning you ideally want seven here, but I do think we'll be able to get a stop on him. So I'm probably going to go to stick right here. And then I'm going to do something unique to bunch. Let's see if we can fit that in right there. That's really unfortunate. I feel like Tom Brady's kind of killing me this game. Quick hike. So here we kind of are, this is like the last play we have to be able to work the entire field. And Plaxico Burst makes a big time catch for us in a big time moment. And we will go for it because why wouldn't you? All right, so going for this here, I really like verticals. Now, 
Looking for that tight end whip. Nice catch. So the cool part about Madden 24 is the the KOs are insane. Like they're really good. They're really helpful for zone. But one of the one of the weaknesses of KOs is that in in the red zone and on the sidelines, oftentimes if you catch it and you get tackled, they almost always give you the catch. So you can actually it just allows you to have the possibility to put the ball into some tighter windows in the situation that you do go down, like in that kind of situation right there. So kind of helped me out, kind of hurt him, honestly, because he did technically get a KO, but he didn't get a KO because I was in the end zone. So we're able to go up seven, going to come out of half here, hopefully play a little bit better on the defensive side of the ball as he just kind of randomly lasered us up. And they were kind of random, too. Like, they weren't really, like, wasn't like, oh, man, I've never seen this before. So he's going to gun spread. Whenever I play gun spread, I think, I think this defense is really good against gun spread. Yep, yep. Manning up the slots on gun spread is just so good. Like just pressing them, shading underneath, and then using these outside thirds. I'm going to do something like this. So I have yellow zone protection. Those outside thirds will never get beat. Those outside thirds will never get beat when you have match on, especially in spread. Let's see if we can play a little better defense. He is going to go to a screen pass. And that's going to be fourth and 18. So that's pretty good D. Coming out of half, I actually need to change where these guys are. This will probably be a little help, more helpful for me. So kind of an adjust it, adjusty, but in general, this is super helpful. You're going to get that screamer. Yeah, really nice. And now we got him on the ropes. We went from like being on the ropes ourselves to now we have him on the ropes. Now, if you guys didn't know, I released an ebook on my YouTube channel about this far tight slot. And this has been a really good like under center kind of gimmick e offense for a while. And it is is certainly that this year. So I'll show you kind of what we're doing here. And get out of here with Brady. And it kind of puts him in conflict. He's either got to choose the tight end post or he's got to choose Tom. And Tom has 90-plus speed now, so he's going to be a little bit more effective than he ever ever really been as far as a pocket or a uh, rollout threat. He is slow for the game. I actually like how they scaled speeds this year because, like, Peyton Manning and Brady were actually usable, whereas years past – you would never use these quarterbacks because they were incapable of ever even getting just a couple yards on a scramble. Now, they're not the fastest quarterback in the game, but they have speed where they can actually move a little bit. So, actually, I kind of feel like that was better. I don't know. All right, trips half back week here. A little read option. And really, that's the only thing you give up when you man a line against a formation like this. That's the thing you got to watch is these kind of these kind of trips, these kind of trips looks. Take that away. It's a KO. Be great if any of my pick artists would take the ball away or lurk artists. Empty base flex. I love defending this formation. Randomly, my formation kind of flipped. I don't know why I did that. That was kind of weird. That did not work out right. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's, uh, I think it's because I was not on. Oh, I have auto flip on. I like, tr I like defending trail by flex too. Going to run the ball on fourth and five. Why wouldn't you? Down two possessions. Sticking to the ground game. 
I'm making a cardinal sin on defense, and I'll talk about it uh, in just a minute because it actually is kind of important to to uh, wrestle with here. I got terrible. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so what I did last couple of plays is I picked my play too fast. I want to wait till he picks his play. So then when I do that, now I can come out. And I already know. All right, these are the adjustments you know that we're gonna make. You know, so then we can get in, get into a a more reasonable defense. I feel like that was really good defense, and I did not get rewarded. <laughs> Najee just smacking me in the face. He, I really don't like these random formations we're running here. I'm diving, laying it all on the line for my team. All right, I think we're gonna go back on default, boys. <laughs> You do give your you do potentially have some run stuff that's a little more more open. I'm gonna try this defense. I just don't want to give up the run, and we gave up seven eight yards, second and two. So now we're getting the situation where like, you know, he's trying to score. Um, I still think this defense right here is pretty good. I can find it. Pretty good, decent run defense. We'll see. I lied. <laughs> That's not terrible. Not terrible, not terrible at all. 6-1 is probably a little better. I need to find. I don't know why I can't find that play. We'll go LB Blitz 1 here. And of course, he comes out in this. Nice, 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 nice. And again, I just talked about not doing that where I picked my play before they picked their play, but I did. Still going to stick with Nickel over just because of the way he's playing this. Yeah, he's, he's wanting to run the ball. He's not running a pass. Nickel over does pretty good. Any four down lineman set really is going to be pretty decent run D. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better than your dollar. Yep, same kind of thing here. And I got kind of stuck, but there's that screen again. Yeah, just kind of interesting play calls down the stretch and really not going to give yourself not going to give yourself a good chance. Fourth and nine. Really could call anything, but we're going to go back on our default here. And play a little more. More cover two. And he throws that and catches that. That's crazy. If you look at how he has scored this game, the three touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, they're just, you just don't see people score that way these days. Or maybe you do. All right, West Coast offense has to keep cooking down the stretch here. Three points would close the game. Let's see what we can do, boys. Big bow. Juking. I feel like my angry runs running back doesn't do anything. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back to it. Bunch. I need some better plays out of this tight slots. I feel like my I feel like you don't need a ton of plays, but I feel like it's helpful to have some. Can we go to tray open here. Oh, we can go to tray open. Let's go to tray open. So notice this. So you see this right here. So I auto to tray open. It's just a little wrinkle and just run the ball. Just just a little wrinkle. What you might not know about tray open. Tray open is an offset formation, and it has a couple really good plays. Like it has read option. It has a 5-6 trap. I think it has a counter. Uh, it has a draw. It has an outside zone. Right? It has a lot of good stuff. You also have this empty 5 wide where you have corner strike. So there are some actual really decent uh, complementary formations, in my opinion. As I get shamed again. Let's go mesh post. 
This tight slots could actually be really fun. What's cool about this tight slots is it's got it's it's a slot on both sides. And I think that's that's actually kind of unique. You see here, no hard flat. Look at that drag go about 30 yards up the field. That's not what we wanted, boys. All right, let's just run our bunch offense here. Another thing you could do, another little thing you could do with this offense that a lot of people don't think about is just this motion out post. And the reason why is see how it stresses that user even more? And they just can't hang with it. At the end of the day, they just can't get it. They just can't get it done. 306. I did throw a pick. I don't know how I threw a pick. Wasn't my best moment. I think it was a red zone pick. Otherwise, we'd be a little more comfortably in ahead of this ahead of my man's soul. Souls Prince. I think I've played this guy before. So we're in field goal range here in a standard, like, you know, comp setting. You'd probably kick field goal, but we're going to just keep cooking here. I really like this play, Deep Attack. I think Deep Attack's so good. See how it just stress see, – see how much stress that puts on the user? I mean, it's – it's a really easy read. It's literally impossible for him to use her both. It's just impossible for him to use her both at the end of the day. And then this looks exactly the same. I actually think low-key, a good setup would be something like this. And really looking more toward the right. Whoa, Brady. Brady got shamed. All right, now we go to corner strike. Same exact motion out. Could do a lot of different things with this motion out. This time it's an in route. Now we're looking at that left side. See how he backs up. That tells us we can throw that C route. Unfortunately, we didn't get a good accurate pass. Tom Brady has absolutely destroyed me this game in terms of his accuracy. He's really not been the greatest. And that might just be bad free farming on my part. I really like, this is something a lot of people don't do as I audible to doubles, which low key doubles is not bad because guess what you can do out of doubles? You can create trips. We'll just run the ball. Didn't work out as good for us as it did for him. I will right, we'll go for it just for fun. So what I was going to show you is out of the stick play, if you were to call this and you motion this corner out, the cool part about that is it looks exactly like what we're doing everywhere elsewhere um but the unique thing about this is because you are running the bunch to the wide side of the field it'll still get open and we actually have a touchdown if we can catch the ball in bounds we just can't get dude tom brady's gosh dang it bro i can't believe that that's a touchdown that's literally the game's over we're gone we're going we're going to sleep we're going to night night you know the game's over but instead because tom brady can't get the throw done here we sit. Seam flats are such an interesting zone. I feel like seam flats are just so slow. They don't do anything well. This defense is kind of good. This defense. This will do a little bit better of a job. There. I need to go guard that. And I totally was not there with my user. I knew I needed to guard that too. Play a little cover two. Of course, I pass commit and he runs. This guy is just like, he's just got my number. You know, he's just, he's just, he's just calling good plays out there. Get some reroutes, get a nice flow. Just please knock the ball out. Oh, why would you catch the ball, Revis? Why would you catch the ball when you can throw it up in the air? Third and four. Can we get it done, boys? Defense wins championships. Tom Brady misses throws. Souls Prince finds a way to get a first down. He's taking his time, making sure he's got the right play call. Goes read option. Almost breaks 15 tackles. <laughs> All right. Goes no huddle. And here we go. Two-minute warning. Fourth and five situation. Can we get it 
done. Trips tied in. Here we go. Mana line. You got to man line this. Got my setup in. Here we go. We're going to send some heat. We're going to send some heat. Force a rollout. He throws that play that he scored a touchdown on. This time, Big Joe puts him down. And now all the offense has to do is get a couple first downs, and we will be off for a siesta. Souls Prince doesn't have my number at the end of the day. Able to get it done. Now we're going to go back and just have some sweet, sweet, beautiful passing. You'll see right here. No hard flat. We can throw that all day. That's what I'm saying, man. I think I really do think the West Coast Bunch, I might be back in West Coast Bunch. Either West Coast Bunch or Trips. I just love the way that these formations work. I really do. I think they're so good every year. I mean, you see how they just put so much stress on the defense. I mean, I think that is – bunch offset, like outside of double post, I mean, you have verticals half back under, but that's not going to put the same – I just think deep attack is so good. That's why you run this play ultimately is you want to run deep attack. And it's really just this post route right here. I mean, this is the moneymaker. See, they don't play hard flat. We just throw that. Boom. Get a head stick fumble. Why wouldn't we? And then every now and then you can kind of do some fun stuff. So, like, well, I probably wouldn't do that, though. I just don't think you need to. I just call verticals with the table route. Because now I'm, stretch I'm stressing both flats. He goes man blitz. We throw right there. Bad user. No huddle, no huddle. One of my favorite plays here. This is a, a wheel route. Motion out, and then we're going to zig. And then you can kind of do whatever you want on the back side here. I'm going to smoke. We're looking out. No hard flat. Throw that. It's a touchdown. We can't catch it. Tom Brady throws his fifth pass into the third row of the game. The only thing I don't like about Bunch is I feel like I actually like this setup. I think this setup would be good. Let's see. Go to mesh post, double hitches. And a wraparound post to the corner. Look at this combo. Look at that hitch. KO, KO'd. All right, boys. Spacing. Spacing is low key a good play. There's little things you can do with bunch. I mean, let me show you. So, like, let's go stick. And we're going to go. Flat route, zig route, in route, table route. We're just going to attack the zones. Boom. Fourth and three. He's going to call timeout. He's going to come down to the wire here. Going to go to mesh spot. I haven't showed you this setup yet. I think this setup's really good, too. It's going to ghost route the running back. You don't even have to do that. You can just motion this guy in, put him on a hitch. You can do all this with your hot routes. Like, you don't have to have hot route mastery around. That's another really cool part about West Coast Bunch. You don't have to have hot route mastery. You can just do these combos like this. And they're so good. This guy was wide open in the end zone. I just got instant shedded. And now my man, Soul Prince. One shot, one opportunity. Can he get it done? Playing some solid D. Big Joe Alt, not able to get it done. That literally covers that route 99 times out of 100, and the one time it doesn't, Big Joe Alt's the reason why. Play a little cover two on the right, a little cover three man on the left. I also feel like you don't really need to blitz this year. I think I'm going to do something out of 6-1 for the last little bit. I feel like people should have done this at a 6-1 for way longer than they did. A lot of people went away from this at the end of the year, but this defense was so good. I just Because the thing was, like, you weren't really trying to get – you're only trying to get, like, one stop a game. This little defense right here, it could definitely get the job done. You see how we get that little disengage up the A-gap? Now he has to roll out. Pretty decent. A lot of people went away from that out of 6-1.
And I think the ultimate issue is if you were to send pressure from a pinch line look, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be perfect. Like you'll see right here. I'm going to throw a 30-yard cloud on the left. See how all the blitzers kind of get stuck? And Soul Prince doing what only Soul Prince can do. Seven seconds, no timeouts. Ball on a 13-yard line. He just absolutely destroyed me. And now the question is, can he finish the job? All right, this time we're not going to do that. And Micah Parsons, the Cowboys great, puts the team on his back and makes the play of the game. Two seconds left, Souls Prince living on a prayer. Can he get a sack? If not, even if he does get a sack, I think the game's over. West Coast offense, boys, I think it's back. I think it's really good. I think if Tom Brady doesn't throw the ball out of bounds, we drop maybe 40 points that game. I really like deep attack. I think deep attack really makes West Coast bunch like super good. And if you don't need to block your tight end to pick up blitzes, this offense gets a million times better. Thanks for watching. We'll throw a pick to you in the game. See you later.